On the line right now is Ron Mosier, Utica Observer Dispatch. Uh, good morning, Ron. Good morning. Yet again, another season, third in a row, that we're talking about spring season, talking about having open playoffs for softball and baseball. Crazy, right? Well, well we were talking about that, but it's not going to happen. Oh, it's not uh, going it, to happen. Okay. No, no. Not in baseball. It just, uh, I talked to the... Section three chairman Tom Meese from Oriskany, and uh, and he confirmed actually earlier this morning. I talked to him about uh, it's going back to the forty percent. You got to qualify. You got to win forty percent of your league okay. games, your overall games, or in class. You know, if it's right, C versus right. C teams, that kind of thing. So no, it's going back okay. to the way it, the way it was uh, last. I think the two out of the last three years because of the weather. Um, you know, and teams not getting in enough yeah, games, yeah. they've they've opened it up to everybody. Even if you were say one in ten, right, you could get in, which but is not, terrible. Not anymore. Which... Not not this year. I'm not sure about softball, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, baseball. At least baseball is not going to happen. And the, and the seedings come out Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday uh, so here we are. We're heading into uh, into playoff action. So who gets in? And you're pretty much able to see who gets in at this point. Uh, well, yes and no, because, uh, um, you know, the, the regular season ends officially, I guess, um, at 10 o'clock, uh, uh, I think, uh, Wednesday, if you can get your, get your games in by Tuesday night, the okay. thing is, you know, tonight is iffy, I guess, with storms yeah, and yeah. then tomorrow, hopefully it's dry enough so people can get in at least another game. Right. But, um, I mean, you can see when you when you get in then you're seated by a point system this is the yep. first time baseball is using like uh we've done in basketball a point system where if you're if you beat a same class team you get 5 points if you play uh, okay. up if you're a C team and you beat a B team you get 6 points and of course you can lose points too say if you're a B school and you lose to a C then you're going to lose yep. points so yep. uh, you know it's going to be a point system that's how they're going to seed them Interesting. So that's kind of uh, interesting. I find where you take like a maybe a New Hartford that depending on the sport, depending on the season, depending on the year, um, New Hartford might be a class B school, but also might be a class C school, depending on on size, I believe, is is how they determine that. Yeah. So, yeah no, New Hartford's like on the cusp of A and B. Uh, and, and A yeah. and B. So, yeah, um, yeah. So if they're in that position where they're. They're down to B, and and they're playing A teams. They'd receive more points then, right? If yeah, if you win, yeah, if you win, you're going to win. Yeah, but, that's uh, a good yeah, point. And uh, and New Hartford's having actually having a, a pretty rough season. I think yeah, they have yeah. three wins. So, I mean, they're uh, they're in trouble. But the the thing is, uh, you know, I'm not sure you have to. It makes it tougher for the committee because you've got to document every game and right. okay. Did you beat a C or did you lose wow. to a yeah. B yeah. or something like that? So, okay, but but we have some. I mean, when we talk about powerhouses, uh, I think we got to start this year with Holland Patton. I mm-hmm. brought it up before. Scott Parsons, a great coach, an old school coach that's been there forever, uh, likes to play small ball, and he's got an ace. And his, his name's Jake Beer, a great great pitcher. I remember covering a game of his a couple of years ago when he was a sophomore. And I said, geez, who's this kid? And he's not very big. He doesn't throw 90 miles an hour, but, um, but he's got, I think a seven and one record. The only loss was one, nothing to Canastota. And that Canastota team went like, I don't know, 11 and zero before losing. They've yeah. lost a couple now. And, and in the rematch last week, Jake beer pitched a one, nothing shutout. I think he struck out 14 and Holland Patton now 17 and one. They won nine in a row, and they're they're uh, going to be a force in Class B, I think, especially with Jake Beer on the mound. And they got a couple great great hitters in Connor Stalker, Mike yeah. Benedetto, Jeff Sobel. They got some they got some players who are from that Section Three Championship football team. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, they, they they should be they should be a force in Class B. Adirondack as well. Adirondack's defending champion. They still got Ethan Martin, Alex Gaylord, two good pitchers. So. You know, we we should have a chance there in Class B. All right. Uh, what about uh, uh, Proctor? Always a, a team to keep an eye on. Uh, you think they will they make it this year? Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. I think they're like nine and five. They don't have a ton of yeah. games in, but 
they're always uh, <laughs> they're they're always dangerous because Dave Guido and Steve Stripe have been around forever as far as coaches, mm-hmm. and they always seem to find a way to win. I don't know about offensively. Uh, Dave Antone's a great hitter. They've got they got a couple uh, other guys, but they've got a uh, a young kid, Brandon Peterson, who's already thrown a no hitter. I think he's got three complete game wins as a pitcher, so they're a threat in, in Double A as well as Rome Free Academy. Rome Free Academy just knocked off Whitesboro, Whitesboro's first Tri Valley League loss, and they beat, um, in my opinion, the best pitcher in the area, Avery Cook, the senior that's going to St. John's. They beat him five to one. Mm-hmm. I think Avery struck out ten, but uh, I'm guessing he had some control problems because I think he had four walks that game. So they, uh, RFA upset him five to one. But Whitesboro, again, uh, talked about them all year. They've got the usual suspects, Joey Panuccio. Um, they, in fact, they just played New Hartford and got a combined no hitter from the Bryce's Bryce, Bryce Collis and Bryce Natick uh, no hit um, New Hartford last week. So Whitesboro in Class A, watch out for them. And you know, you can never count out VBS too. Uh, they're they're in Class B, but they're eleven and four and. You know, them along with Holland Patton and Adirondack are our top class B schools. And, uh, you know, you go into class C, Ariskany, I've raved about them all year. Tom Meese's team, they were 14-0 and and they've lost three in a row, including a couple in the league to Westmoreland and West Canada Valley. And uh, But but I still think in class C, you got to look at yep. uh, Ariskany and West Canada Valley. And, and you know, I, I bring this up a lot. Brookfield, little Brookfield. Remember a few years ago they made it to the state final mm-hmm. four. Yeah, uh, I wrote a story. I went actually to downtown Brookfield, by the way, <laughs> downtown Brookfield by the Beaver Den. Walked around town, and talked to townspeople because they made it to the state final four in Class D, and I think they had fourteen kids in the graduation class. Yeah, that's crazy. And you know they had to have just about every high school boy on the baseball team just to field a team. And Jamie Riley's done it again. They're uh, they're Central Counties League champions, I think, for the fourth straight year. And so they could be a force in, in Class D. Uh, they've got a couple good pitchers. And, uh, well, what, you know, must, what must that be like uh, when you when you basically have, uh, you know, a, a baseball team that's that's a good part of your uh, – a good part of your – well, obviously the, the, uh, a class is 12 to 14 students. Uh, but you're – you're talking about a major percentage of the school that's actually on the baseball team. Talk about a uh, camaraderie that gets built through uh, everybody knowing everybody. It's really, and they had that same thing in basketball in the eighties. Oh yeah. Back with Al Knapp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it it, it really back then in the eighties, early eighties, it put Brookfield on the map, really. Mm -hmm. Al Knapp. And the the, the little speck on the map, but it's still, uh, still put them on the uh, map. Yes. There's there's no doubt. You you won't, you, you won't, uh, have traffic gridlock there by any That's, means. That I don't think there, there's no uh, traffic light there. Yep. So uh, I'm gonna ask. Uh, you. So w- when do we find out again, Ron? When when the seedings, brackets, all that stuff? Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday for mm-hmm. baseball and softball. I think the meetings in the morning. Okay. Uh, I, I've just been begging the 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 section committee to send them to me as soon as they can. So yep. I'll so, have to get them online, online and in print as soon as possible. Just a quick story. I was up in my attic, my mother's attic, over the weekend as I'm preparing for the world's largest yard sale, by the way, June 15th. Or mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, and and I, had, <laughs> I had saved a bunch of stuff. 2001, that summer, uh, our baseball team at Notre Dame included uh, Chris Mahoney and Matt Devins. There were a lot of other really good athletes on that team, good baseball players, but a couple of standouts in Mahoney and Devins, of course. Devins wound up being drafted by the Tampa Bay uh, Rays. Right. So I still have, Ron, and I just went over it yesterday, the article you wrote after Utica Notre Dame won the mm-hmm. state championship in 2001, and I'll never forget when you talk about all these different class matchups and you know local schools playing above or below their class we were at 500, I possibly two or three games under 500 about halfway through the season that year, but we're playing Whitesboro, New Hartford, VVS. We were a C or a D school, and we're playing A's and B's all the time. I'll just never forget. Right. We, we ended up beating Proctor. We played Proctor a lot. We played RFA. We ended up beating Proctor and never lost again the rest of the season. And the interesting thing, I think, in the story is that we played as a C school. We played all these A's and B's. We got to the Class C tournament, and we were beating teams that were ranked in the state 15-1, to 20-3, but we were playing such higher-level competition 
all season long. It was like a cakewalk when we finally got to the tournament. But a really exciting time for a lot of these uh, young it's amazing. Young yeah. Well, I, I remember that, Jeff. And, and you know, the, uh, the thing is, obviously, you face better pitching during the regular season. Absolutely. Got to help you come, yeah. uh, come sectional time yeah. when you w- when you get in your own class and, and in that tournament uh, and you face pitchers that aren't as good as you've faced all year in the regular season. It, it's got to help. And, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, Notre Dame – Notre Dame's had some great players, but when, whenever, whenever I retire, I'll tell you that uh, one of the best hitters I've ever seen, and he play, he, I, I still think he's the answer to a trivia question, Jason Simone. He won, he won state baseball championships with Notre Dame and Proctor. Wow. He, he was a great, great hitter, went to my alma mater, Cortland State, was a Division Three All-American, transferred to... University of Mount Olive in South Carolina, and wanted and uh, was a Division Two All American wow. there. Jason uh, was he's, also he's very probably the best pure hitter I've ever covered. And keep in mind that I've been around a long time. I just didn't cover Andy Van Slyke or Mark Lemke, right? Um, you know, in their heyday. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Jason Simone, what a natural left-handed swing! Oh, he was just a great, great hitter. He, I really thought he was going to get drafted, but he really didn't have a position for him. You know. Well, I remember oh, back and in he West wasn't Dude. a power hitter. Yeah, he, he was just a, a base hitter, a line drive hitter, doubles, triples. Uh, pretty cool to look back, especially when uh, what Manaski was talking about pull, pulling out an old uh, article, and you know, it just so happens to be written by uh, by Ron and Andrew. Yeah, but Jason was also very feared back in West Utica Little League as a pitcher. Uh, I remember he was on post two two nine, and everybody hated having to go up against him. Oh, God, we got to face Jason again. I mean, overall, oh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Overall, just phenomenal talent. Uh, pretty cool, Ron. And, of course, uh, in 29 days, it's just around the corner, the uh, the big event happening, uh, the Mohawk Valley All-Stars, uh, where you guys pack, I don't know, how many people into the uh, into the gymnasium? Uh, I believe it's going to be close to 1,500 again. Wow. It's incredible. It'll, it'll be sold out. It, yeah. it should, be, uh, should be another great time. In fact, uh, you know, we have uh, the big stage set up with Jackie Joyner, Kersey coming. And then we hand out special awards, and uh, and I think it's 27 sports we give uh, all Mohawk yeah. Valley Athlete of the Year, and then nine other special awards. Uh, and it, it should be another great night. And, you know, it, it, kids get the red carpet treatment. I yeah. mean, I can remember, you know, three years ago, the first time we did this, I went in in the afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon that day, uh, for the walkthrough, and – I, I was floored by how big and how extravagant everything was. It, it's uh, it, it's a super thing for this area, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of it. It's uh, it, it's going to be another special night. And yeah. in fact, I'm working on uh, you know we have a big stage in the center, and then a couple jumbotron um, screens, and doing some interviews on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And those interviews go up as we announce uh, award winners. So uh, it's really a special night. Uh, if uh, if anybody hasn't been there, if anybody's been there, let people know what yeah. it's like because uh, you leave there thinking, did, did we really just see that? In yeah, Utica, it's really, New York? It's, it's awesome. It's that, uh, and, you know, it, 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 we talk about a Jason Simone. It, yeah. That's what that's what bothers me a little uh I, I have a few regrets that, geez, I wish we had done this years ago because yeah, there were yeah. a lot of deserving athletes that I've covered in the 30-plus years. Well, you're going like to a... have a hard time not doing it uh, from here yeah. forward because uh, it's been a uh, – it, this has been it's – a, it's a really awesome event, uh, highlighting yeah. great athletes in the area, which is really pretty cool. Uh, all right, Ron, but, yeah. we, we appreciate yeah. it. UticaOD.com, and we'll talk again soon. Baseball and softball playoffs just around the corner. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. All right. Have a great day.